Hello everyone, it's Benny, and today we're going to be starting a new project. In this video, we're going to be making the second game in our lightweight Java game library slash OpenGL development series. And I said at the end of the last video that I wasn't really sure what we were going to create. Other than it's not going to be 3D, 3D is going to be whatever the next game we create. But I have come to a decision. And what I've decided is that I'm going to do a simple 2D RPG. And there's a couple of reasons for that. First off, I was sort of thinking of what I really want you to get before you go into 3D. And the thing I really... that well, what really stands out, I guess you could say, is I want you to master the concept of game mechanics, of making all this code that makes a game run, and be a game. And because if you haven't mastered that, then when you get into 3D, it's all the exact same stuff. It's just a little bit more complicated because you have to deal with three dimensions instead of two. So it gets a lot more difficult, and I think just learning all of, of the game mechanics at the same time as learning all of the rendering techniques and the fancy 3D math, I think that would all just be too much at once, in my opinion. So, that's the first re thing I've really decided. I wanted some game that would allow you to master game mechanics. And I think a 2D role-playing game would be perfect for that, because role-playing games, in general, are s some of the most difficult games to create out of any game genre in existence. So, I think if you can get, create a role-playing game, then you can create pretty much any game you imagine. And that's really the, the big reason why I decided to go for a 2D role-playing game. And the other reason is because it's a very expansive genre. You can have a very large number of things that go into a role-playing game. And the reason I wanted that is because I'm going to be doing a completely original 2D RPG. And by original, I don't mean that it's going to be completely different, like, there's not going to be XP, there's going to be some other thing. No. I mean, it's still going to have the elements of a role-playing game, but... Also, I just... I don't want to recreate Zelda or something, if you understand what I mean by that. I want to create something that's new. So... And the reason I want to do that is because it'll give you a really good idea of how to decompose this concept of, hey, this is what I want my game to have, into, hey, this is what my game actually has. And I think that's another important thing that you can get out of this. But what I think is a really cool thing is, since I am doing it completely original, and I've decided that I'm not going to go into this with a set plan, which I'll explain a little bit more, uh, I'll explain a little bit more about that in a bit, it will, this will allow me to if any of you have anything that you've been wanting to create in a game, if you wanted to, me to show you how to create that in this game, and it's appropriate f for this sort of level of development, then I could go ahead and show you that. And that would, I think that would be a little bit more focused towards my viewers and help my, v my viewers, the people who are actually watching my videos. You know, it'd be a little more personalized and would allow you to get just that much more out of it. Uh, so I, I like that idea. And of course, if you have anything that you do specifically want me to cover, like, I don't know, just anything, then we go ahead and post a comment. Now, and again, if it's appropriate for this level of development, then I will do my best to show you how to create it. And yeah, so with all that out of the way, I think we can go ahead and at least get started. So... Since we're developing an original game, I figure now's a pretty appropriate time to bring up that there are seven steps that go into creating an original game. So, the first step is the planning phase. And in this phase, what you will do is you'll decide who your main character is, you'll decide what the basic game mechanic is, whether it's going to be running around shooting people or solving puzzles, or in our case, a role-playing game mechanic. You'll decide... Uh, um, what? Yeah, you'll just decide all the basic things that go into the game, like all that, the story, etc., etc. And your general goal in this phase is just to get 
whatever idea you have in your head, whatever concept you have for what your game is, and get it written down in some form that where it's very clear what you need to do to actually create the game. And once you've gotten that far, you've completed stage one. But I'm going to skip stage one. And the reason for this is, well, it goes back to what I'll explain in the introduction, how I'm going to be trying my best to implement any things you want guys wanted to know how to do in this game. And I really, if I start jotting down and putting things in stone right here, that could potentially conflict with that. So I'm going to sort of wing it for a bit, which is not recommended in any way. I cannot stress enough how important it is not to skip this step. But in this one rare instance, I'm going to actually do it. Well, I'm going to actually skip it. So, again, I don't recommend it if you're developing an original game, but in this instance, I will. So, we'll just move straight on to step two. This is, I like to call this the mechanics phase. This is where you do everything you can to get the minimum needed to have a playable game. So, you get the game engine set up, you'll get the player working, you'll do... You won't have any fancy graphics or anything, your characters will more likely than not just be a white square, but... I mean, your goal at this point is really just get a game that works. And the reason you're doing this and not trying to get all the graphics in yet, or doing anything more than is necessary to have something playable, is because you want to test it, you want to play it. And if you play it and it ends up being really boring, then you, you gen generally speaking, you either want to go back and try to fix it to make it something that's interesting, or you just want to say, okay, this was a bad idea, I'm going to start again. And if you already spend a bunch of time working on fancy lighting or graphics, you know, that's all gone to waste. So, that's the reason for this. So, that's sort of what we're going to be doing, and now let's go ahead and get started. First thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new project, so just click this, or go to File, New Project, select the Java category, select Java Application, and click Next. So now we need to name it. I'm just going to call it RPG Game. It doesn't really matter, you can call it whatever you want. So, make sure create main class is unchecked, and make sure set as main project is checked. And just click finish. So now we have a project. So now we have to do standard setup. But first thing we have to do is we have to add lightweight Java game library to the project. So open it up, right click on the libraries folder, and click add library. Select the lightweight Java game library and click Add. And the other thing we have to do is that line of code, which I'm just going to copy from the, the other project we did. But I'll read it out to you people who have never seen it before. What you want to do is you want to right-click on your project, go to Properties, and click Run. And under VM Options, you want to type this, dash djava dot library dot path equals and in quotation marks you will want the full path to wherever your Java natives are located and if you want more information on that you should look at the setting up video for lightweight Java game library which I believe is in video one in fact yeah it is in video one so if you want more information on this line of code look in video one click OK and now We've created a project. I'll just close this because we don't need that. Now under source packages, we need a package. So I'm going to right click and create a new package. We can call it com dot base dot and since the first thing we're going to make is the game engine, we're going to call it engine and that's good enough. I'm just going to click finish. So now I'm going to right click here and create the main class. So right click on the package we just created, select new and Java class call it main or whatever you want to call your main class and click finish. So now we've got the main class. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to explain something really quick for the people who have just come from my Pong series. 
I am actually going to be rewriting my engine from scratch. And the reason I'm going to be rewriting it is because, first off, it was incredibly simple, and it's really going to be easy enough that we don't need to worry about, oh god, we have to type 10,000 lines of code again. It's more like, oh god, we have to type 100 lines of code again. So it's not that bad. And second of all, it's really not fair to the people who are just coming for the RPG series to say, okay, and copy this line of code from this entire other project we did. That's, I don't think that's fair to them. So, I'm just gonna start from scratch. So, it all starts with the main method. Public static void main string array args. And now, we need to go over the seven steps to creating a game engine. So what is the first thing a game engine needs to do? It needs to create some window for the game to be in and do everything necessary to prepare that window to hold a game. So I'll do that in a method called init display. And I'll just create the method private static void init display. And that should get rid of the error. Yes. Okay, good. Now I'll go to the display class and I will set dot set, because I don't want to type it, set display mode, and create a new display mode. And I'm just going to pass in a width and a height, you can pass in whatever you want, you can set constants for it, but you just need to set, pass in some display mode. And I'll hit control shift I for my imports, and display mode will be org.lwjgl.opengl.display mode, not the other one. So click OK. And now that we've told our display what resolution, we do display.create. And that creates a window for us. And again, if you want a deeper explanation of this, you can watch the Pong series. So we've created a display. We're also going to set up the keyboard here, so keyboard.create. And control shift i import. And make sure it's the org.lwjgl.opengl. or org.lwjgl.input.keyboard. And now do alt enter and surround block with try catch and that will put all this code in a try catch block and there we have initialized display so that's created a window but it hasn't really set it up for opengl to be in it so I'll do initgl private static void initgl and now we need to set up opengl so first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a projection matrix for our well, I shouldn't say we're going to create the projection matrix. We're going to set up the projection matrix for our project. So the way we do this is first, we go up here and we type import static org.lwjgl.opengl.gl11.star. And that will give us access to all the OpenGL methods. So I'll do gl matrix mode? Yes, okay. I don't think I skipped anything, but so I'm, but I'm just going to go straight to GL matrix mode. Now, we need to select which matrix, so GL underscore projection. And now we are, now any calls we do to open GL methods from this point onwards will be affecting the projection matrix. So first off, I'm going to do GL load identity to get rid of any junk that might already be in there. And I'll do GL ortho. I want to go from some square, so I'll go from 0 to display.get width, and from 0 to display.get height. And now what, the next thing we have to do is we need to set up the Z, which will just be negative 1, comma 1. I actually may have those backwards, but I think that's right. So after, now we set up the projection matrix. Everything else we're going to do is in the model view matrix, so we're just going to switch back. GL matrix mode, GL underscore model view. If typed there. Okay, good. Now, we're doing 2D operations, so I'm going to GL disable the GL depth test, so we don't have extra information to process 3D going on. And we can also set the geo clear color. So geo clear color, I believe this is free f, zero, zero, zero. 
Is it a free F method? Okay. Well, there. Zero, 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 comma, zero. Four zeros. And I'll just set our clear color to completely black. And with all that done, we've set up our project. Well, we haven't set up... Oh yeah, we did set up the project, but we set up our window for displaying OpenGL. So, there. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to start the game loop. So I'm going to create a game loop method. I'm just going to do private static void game loop. And we've created the game loop method. So now we've got, that we've got the game loop method, we need to actually make it a loop. So I'll do while not display dot is close requested. So this will run as long as our window is not being closed in some form or fashion. And there we go. Okay. And we do three things in the game loop. First thing we do is we get input. Next thing we do is we update, we do all the game logic, and then we render. So I'll create all that above the game loop, and actually I'll put the initGL above the game loop, because I think the initGL method's a little bit more important. So private static void get input. This is where we'll do all of our calls for getting input, Whoops, not a caps lock. Private static void. Update. This is where we'll do all of our update operations. And private static void render. And the only one of these we're actually going to do anything in yet is the render method. So when we're actually drawing, the first thing we're going to do is we'll do GL clear. And we will clear the GL color buffer underscore bit. Be whoops. Not okay. <laughs> Geo color buffer bit, and that will get rid of whatever's on our screen already. And then we will do GL load identity. It'll reset the matrix for the frame, and then we'll do all our drawing in here. So I'll just delete comments that says draw. And after we've drawn everything, we are going to display it to the screen. So. We'll do display dot update, and I actually have forgotten one more thing, but I'll do that in a second. So next thing we need to do is we're going to put in a set frame rate because if we have a dynamic frame rate, that requires extra calculations that are really not necessary, and it also prints some visual glitches. So I'll do display dot sync. I'll put our game at 60 FPS. And now our game's running at 60 FPS. And the thing I forgot to do is in init display, I need to do display dot set vsync enabled to true. And this will sync our the display of frames to the refresh rate of our monitor. So this way we won't have weird visual glitches of frames overwriting one another when they get to the display. And I believe this oh nope, I almost forgot last thing we need to do to create the game engine is clean up. So I'll create that um, right above the... I'll do it above the init display. So private static void cleanup. This is where you destroy the display. Display dot destroy. That'll get rid of any... That'll do any cleanup we need to do for the display. And keyboard dot destroy. That'll do any cleanup we need to do for the keyboard. And with that all out of the way, that should be the management system for our game engine completely done. So actually, we need to do one more method that is called init game. This will set up whatever game our game engine should be processing. So I'll just play private static void init game. And there we go. Now we can actually create a game class. So I'm going to right click on my package, create a new Java class called game, click finish, and we now have a game class. So this needs three methods for now. That's public void get input, public void update, 
and public void render. And we'll just leave it like that for now. So, now that we have our game all set up, or well, we have our game class, we're going to need to set up our game engine manager to process it. So I'm going to create a variable at the top, private static game called game. We're going to use this to keep track of whatever game we're processing. In init game, I'll do game equals new game. In get input, I'll do game. Excuse me, game dot get input. In update, I'll do game dot update. And in render, I'll replace the draw comment with game dot render. And this should finish our game engine management class. We can actually close this. We don't need it anymore. So, just to confirm everything's working, I'm going to click the Run button and select the main class. And we get a completely blank window. And this is exactly what we want to see right now. Excellent. So now that we have our game set up, we have our game engine, we now need to set up the game object. So, I'm going to right-click on com.base.engine, create a new class. I'm going to call it game object. And this is the first thing that actually will be different from our Pong game object. So, just like Pong, it needs to be public abstract class called game object. Because we're not actually going to create any things that are just game objects. Everything will inherit from game object. And now we can actually start creating all the data that goes into making a game object. So let's think, what data do we need to make the game object? Well, just like in Pong, it has some position in the world, some 2D position, so that will be represented by a public, actually, it's not public, private float x and a private float y. That will keep track of our position. We will... I'm actually have sort of debated on whether I'll need these or not, but for now I'll just put them in and if we don't need them we'll remove them later. But we'll take the size of our game object, so private float size x and private float size y. So we now have size x and size y. And this is everything our Pong game objects had, but we need a little bit more than this. because. At some point or another, our game is going to have graphics. And, in fact, it may get even beyond that and have animations. In fact, it probably will have animations. So, we will need to keep track of whatever graphic or animation our game object has. Now, not everything has an animation, but I'm going to go ahead and say every game object has an animation. And that'll be all it has. That way, if I want a game object that isn't animated, I can just give it an animation with only a single image. And if I want an animated game object, I can just give it an animation with a lot of images. So I'll have a private animation called anim. And we will need to create this class, but I'm just going to leave it like this for now. And now we need the two methods for our game object. Public void update. Not abstract this time, I'm going to leave it like this, because not every object will need to be updated. And public void render. And we actually will go back and implement the render method for the time being. Well, but excuse me. We will go back and implement the render method later, but for the time being, we will not be doing anything here. We'll just be leaving it. And because I think it's reasonable to assume that we will need it, I'm going to create getters and setters for these. So... I believe that's under refactor. At least I thought it was under refactor. Okay. Apparently it's not here. So I don't know where it is, so I'm just going to do it manually. Because I don't want you to spend half the video waiting for me to find where the, the automatic create getters and setters is. Apparently it's not under refactor anymore. So public void get. Excuse me. Public float get x, we'll, we'll just return x, public float get y, we'll return y, public fl actually I'm not even going to have any setters, I'm just going to have getters for now, so public float get 
sx return sx and public float git sy and it'll return sy and I believe this will set up our game object class so now that we're done with this let's go ahead and set up the animation class so I'm gonna right click on engine create a new Java class I'm gonna call it animation click finish and that should get rid of our error so let's think of what our animation class will have well I I think it's safe to say that it's going to have some list of all the different images it'll have in a frame and realistically you could do this with either a list or an array list but I'm gonna do it with an array list because I think it's reasonable to assume that sometimes an animation will have frames being added on the fly so I'm gonna create a well not just straight array list but private array list of call, call frame and I'll do control shift I to import java.util.array list and actually I'll make it an array list of frames and I'm going to specify a type it's going to be a holding sprites and we'll have to create the sprite class as well so we've created the, all the data for the animation as far as I can tell other than I'm going to have a private int for current frame and again we could go back and add more to this later I'm just sort of winging it and thinking this is what I think an animation class should have and we may need more we may need less we'll find out so now I'm going to create a constructor for it public animation and in here I'm not going to take anything in I'm going to set initialize frame to a new array list of sprites and that should be okay it should be frames not frame and that should be pretty much everything but I'm going to have a render method to it public void render and what we will do is we will just do frames dot get I'm I can almost guarantee you there's a git method in this class somewhere you cannot tell me that a list does not have a git method I know it has a method from getting some yeah du -du -du. I'm just it does not have a git method this is very strange I could have I guess I've been working in C++ for too long. Like, okay, apparently ArrayList can't get things out of them. Okay, I'm back. And as it turns out, I was right. You, it is a dot .get method, but for some reason NetBeans is not letting me right now, so I'm just going to leave this as it is. But while I was looking it up, I thought of something. I've decided that I don't want an ArrayList of sprites. I want an ArrayList of frames. And the frames will have sprites, because I decided I want this to be a little bit special. And again, I'll I'll go a little bit more into that when we get to it. But you'll see once I implement the frame class why I'm doing this. So we're gonna have an array list of frames, and also it makes a little bit more sense that an array list of this called frames would hold frames. So yeah. And public void render. Let's see. Is this everything that I need to do? Until I can use the get method, no. So I'm going to take a guess and say it's not letting me get it because it doesn't recognize frame. So I'm going to go ahead and create a frame class and see if that helps. So I'm going to create a new class called the frame class and click finish. So there we go, we now have a frame class. It now should be happy. And now I should be able to do frames.get. And there you go. It was just unhappy because it couldn't recognize frame. So get current frame. I'll just so I'm going to create a frame, a temporary frame, and I'm going to render whatever that frame is. And the reason I am going to be doing it like this is because well, oh, you'll see once I implement the frame class. 
I know I keep saying that, but it's really hard to explain this idea until you actually see it. So I'm going to draw whatever frame that is. I'll just create an F in here called public void render. And this is actually going to be a Boolean method. So if temp.render, then current frame plus plus. And this might make a little bit more sense now. The reason I'm doing it like this is because I'm going to have a public Boolean. And I'm just going to return false. So I can explain this in peace. Okay, and the reason I'm going to be doing it like this is because this way I'll get whatever frame we're currently at, and if we're supposed to be... Actually, I just noticed something, so I, I have to deal with it. I'm going to probably plan out a little bit more next time so that I'm not doing this sort of going back and forth between I, I'm explaining and I'm trying to actually write out what I want to do. So... Yeah, I'm going to fix this issue in the next video, don't worry. And then current frame, modulus equals frames dot size. This way, if we're at the maximum frame, when we're supposed to go to the next frame, then we'll go back to the first frame. Okay, so here's how this is going to work. Every time I have a frame, I'm going to, to render it when the animation is supposed to render it. Now, every frame is going to keep track of how long it's supposed to last in the number of frames. So, this way, if I want frames that are different lengths, so if I want one particular frame of animation to be displayed for 10 frames, and if I want to only be displayed for 2 frames, I could do that very easily. And every time I render, it's going to update the number of times this frame has been drawn, and if this frame has ex been drawn however many times it's supposed to be drawn, then it's going to return true. And that's what this is testing. So if I'm at the last time I'm supposed to draw this frame, then I'll go to the next frame. And the way reason I'm doing this is because if the next frame is outside of the animation range, which means we were on the last frame of animation, this will just take it back to the first, because we'll do module is by the number of frames that we have. So, there. And that should be the way that our rendering system works. Now we just need to actually implement the frame class. So, let's go ahead and implement the frame class. First off, as I explained, we will need to keep track of how many, well, actual frames of the game this particular frame is supposed to be displayed. So I'll have private int, which reminds me. Okay, everything's good still. So a private int for, I'll just call it length. And I will also have a sprite called SPR. And this will be whatever image the frame is supposed to have. So it'll have an amount of time this frame is supposed to take and some image. So I'm going to create a constructor for it, so public frame, and I'm just going to take in a sprite SPR and a length. So that's way this dot length dot SPR equals SPR, and this dot length equals length. And of course we'll need to implement the sprite class, but that's okay. And also I want to keep track of how which how many times we've been displayed off ready, right? Yes, okay. I do need to keep track of how many times we've been displayed already in the frame class this time. Okay. And I'll call it just num displayed and yeah, why not? So in our constructor we'll set the number of times displayed to zero because we haven't been displayed at all yet. And in our render method the first thing we're going to do is we are going to do dumb displayed plus plus because we've been displayed again. Actually, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw the sprite. Then we're going to increase the number of times displayed. 
and if our, the number of times displayed is above or equal to the length, and technically, technically you could just test if it was equal to, but if for some reason this it gets above, this will keep track of it too. So if it's above or equal to the length, then what we want to do is we oh I put a colon instead of a semicolon. So if it's above the length, then I'm going to set num displayed back to zero, and I'm going to return true. Otherwise, I'm going to return false because that means we're still not above or equal to the length. And that should be just about everything. Just because I can, and this won't cause a significant penalty, I'm going. Nah, actually, nah. I was going to test if they'd put in a length that was actually valid, but I'm just going to trust that they put everything in correctly. Because, after all, I'm pretty sure I'm going to do things correctly. <laughs> so, at least in that area. And that should complete our frame class. And that completes our animation class. All we need now is a sprite. So this should be the last class of our decomposition. So I'm going to create a new class called Sprite, and now we need to implement it. So first thing we need to do is we need to remember we're still in step two. We're not doing fancy graphics. We're just doing the minimum required to make a game that's runnable. So since we're do trying to do the minimum required to make a game that's runnable, what I'm going to do is for my sprite class, I am just going to keep track of a color. Because objects being different color should be enough to distinguish which objects are which. So I'm going to create, or I'm going to keep track of the red value, a float for the green value, and a float for the B value. So red, green, and blue. And we will need a render method, so public void render. And there. We render. And I'm going to want a size x, so private float size x, private float size y. And when we draw, we will want to draw a rectangle using OpenGL. So. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, first, I'm going to import the OpenGL methods. So import static org.lwgl.opengl.gl11.star. And that should give us all the OpenGL methods. Now, first off, we want a new matrix so that anything we do in here will be OK. And actually, I'm wondering if... OK, OK. Never mind. It should be OK. So actually, I don't. The only thing I need to do is just do GL begin, because we're going to draw a square. And this, in theory, means I can get rid of the S, X, and S, Y in game object. So just get rid of all these. GL begin. And I'll do GL underscore gaze. Okay, I'm on quads. I'll do GL end. And all of our drawing code goes between here. And remember, you don't need the curly braces, but I like them because I think it makes it look things more organized. I think it makes it look more organized. So we'll need first a vertex. It's geo vertex 2f. It's first I want to be at zero, zero. Now my next point. We'll, I'm trying to draw clockwise if I remember correctly. So that'll be straight up, so at 0, comma, size y, that'll take me upwards. Now geo vertex 2f, this should be the opposite current order, so sx, sy. And our final vertex that we're drawing should be sx, 0. Because that's the only point combination we haven't done yet. And this should draw a square. And I almost forgot, we need to take into account the color, so I can actually put it above here. But I'll do GL color 3F RGB. 
That will set OpenGL's drawing color to whatever color the sprite's supposed to be holding. So the only thing left to do is create a constructor for our sprite. So public void sprite. And I'll take in a red value, a green value, and a blue value, and a size in X, and a size in Y. I'm just going to take in everything. So this dot all. R equals R, this dot G equals G, this dot B equals B, this dot SX equals SX, this dot, dot SY equals SY. There. We are finished for the time being. So, I think that's enough for this video. It's, I don't really know how long I've gone on so far, but I think it's been quite a while. We set up a basic animation system, even though that technically is a little bit unnecessary for the time being since we were sort of going for the bare minimum. At least the system's in place for later. Animation was overkill, but I put it in anyways. And hey, now you know how to do animation if you didn't before. So, all I should have to do in theory is do animation.render, and that should just draw whatever the next frame is. We'll need to go back to there later to make it so that we can actually put in frames and set up an animation, but it's okay. So I hope you enjoyed, and remember, if there's anything you want to explicitly get out of the series, please post it in the comments. And um, yeah, so thank you, and see you next time.